everyone and welcome to Class Act with Ilse Klink, where I help you take the hustle out of getting started as an actor. This week we're going to be chatting about the magic of acting and the reality of the business of acting, which I think is very important because I was chatting to a, a group of young people last week when I was on set of a very particular um, television series and you know, they were telling me about a couple of realities that they wish they had known, so I'm going to be discussing that with you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to make any comments, please post them in the box below. And then I also want to let you know that on my website, www.ilsaclink.com, you can book a session with me where I can help you with audition preparation. I give acting classes and I also give career advice tailor-made to suit your personality and what it is that you'd like to do for your career. So let's get started. The reason why a lot of people become actors is because they want to create a magical experience for people. They want to take you on a journey where your reality is suspended, you know. We create the magic and tell people to come into our little lair where we um, explore different kind of characters and we have a story to tell. And that's why we do it. We create magic for people. And that's why you also find that um, in reality, if you've played on a television series or if you were in a theatrical production, a theatre production, people come up to you and call you by that character's name because you were able to create a world of fantasy that they were able to partake in, that they were drawn into, and that they believed because you gave a very believable performance. <laughs> And, you know, this is the real, suspended reality that you were the, taking, taking them on. You were taking them on a journey. And that's the beauty of what it is that we are able to do with our craft. We make people believe a particular story that we want to tell. We take them into a world of fantasy where they can forget the realities of their life. And we say, this is, your, this is the reality we're going to show you. This is the story we're going to tell you now. And um, that's what we do. And for this magic, we get paid. We get paid a salary. And um, we have a lot of debt also. If you went and studied drama, you're probably sitting with, um, and if you were, didn't have a, an amazing trust fund or you didn't have your parents paying for your studies, you would have paid for it yourself. So the reality is, is that you're sitting with like 60, 70, 100,000 rands worth of debt. You studied, you know. Um, and you've got to pay that debt back. And um, the thing about your career is that you want it to be as long lasting and as amazing as possible. The reality is we get paid a salary. We get 25% of tax taken off our salaries. We get 15% that goes to 10 to 15% that goes to our agents. There are expenses to be paid. We need to have a place to stay. We need to transport ourselves to and from work. We need makeup, for, especially for the ladies, um, you know, for auditions that you're going to be doing or theatre productions you're going to be doing. You need to take care of your hair. You need to go to the gym to go and build that body and keep that instrument of yours in tune. You need to eat. I mean, the basic expenses that human beings have, just like somebody who studied law, just like somebody who became a doctor, we all have expenses and we have student debt to pay. So a lot of the time when you're young, people will say, come and do this for exposure. You know, you need to really think about that exposure line of yours, the exposure line that people use to get you to do things for them for free. The reality is, you know, um, the exposure is not going to cook food for you at night. I don't know if you all saw that meme about this pan <laughs> for this person that's cooking the, the, the food with the exposure that they, they got, you know. It's a very funny, it's a little, it's a funny video. Here's the exposure. This is how I'm cooking my food with the exposure. There's nothing in the pan. It's really funny. But that is the reality of the industry. You know, we ask people to, or people... We want them to be a part of something and later on the money will come and sometimes the money doesn't come, you know. So that's something you need to decide for yourself, whether you want to do things for free. I advise you that you shouldn't. Um, um, but yeah, 
that's a decision that you have to make when you're getting started out. It, it, it's very hard to say no. You know, it's very hard to just say no, but understand what your worth is and do what you need to do. Make those decisions for yourselves. At the end of the day, the reality of the industry is that when you're working, you should be saving to have at least three months worth of survival money, I call it. So to be able to cover all of your expenses, because you should know what your budget is by now, you should know what your budget looks like. You need to decide how you're going to spend your money. So all of those things need to be in your budget. And you have to have three, three months worth of salary in your bank account at any given time. I mean, COVID has really shown us and really took us by surprise. And if you didn't have any kind of savings, it's been really tough. I mean, it's been tough all around. Um, people haven't been able to work, but if you had had some sort of savings, you would have been able to survive for at least three months. You know, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in reality for a lot of performers. It's it's a struggle at the moment. Um, some people have six months worth of salary in their account at any given time, which is a really great thing. Obviously, it takes time to build up that amount of money in your account. So you've got to be very diligent with every gig that you do, everything that you do. Instead of going out to the shops and spending your money, you should first pay yourself. Put that money into your kitty. <laughs> Put in your 10% or 20% or whatever it is that you decide to save. And have a plan of how you're going to do it by June or December or January, I want to have three months worth of salary. That is going to be very, very useful in the long run. Because, and of course, there will be a time where you're going to have to use all of that money. You know, you're going to use that three months salary up and then because, and I've been through it. Many people are going through it. Many people have been through it. But you sit at home for three months and you don't have any work. There's nothing coming in, you know. Um, it happens to me from time to time. Last year when I got back from a worldwide tour, I didn't have work from August to February. I had little bits of pieces coming in and then COVID struck as well. So I mean, it's been really tough, but that's the reality of the situation. That's the reality of being in the inter entertainment industry. And we've seen it now more than ever. So have that money built up. The other advice that I've got for you is if you ever get a year's contract, and I mean, this is also a very personal choice, but this is what I found to help. Um, you know, some people are waiting for others to come and save them. Maybe you have great plans on getting married to somebody, so you'll have a dual income. That's really great. But if you don't and you're on your own, it's always good to, as an actor, you because you're freelancing, most of the time, you won't be able to approach a bank and say, I would like to buy a house. You can't do that. The bank wants to see that you've been working for at least a year. They want to know that you've got some kind of recourse, you know, or some way of paying your rent because you can't just take, um, you can't just take your, 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 your freelance salary slip and say, Hey, look, I'm working. It might be great, you could be working freelance for an entire year, that's great. But once you have a year's contract with anything, so if you're on a soap or you get a theatre contract that's going to run for the next year or two, take that contract to the bank. And if property is something that you want to do, buy, if that is something that you want to buy, and I do advise you to start young, because there is very little financial security in this um, industry very little financial security so the thing is that you want to start building longevity in terms of your financial well-being so that you can see yourself to the end we don't have a pension plan we pay UIF but you can't claim UIF it's always very strange to me I mean that's something that has to get sorted out by government as soon as possible um, also with a car if you want to buy a car you've got to have something that's long term so that you you know, they're not going to just hand you over, hand over a car to you when you don't know if you're going to be working in three months time. You're going to be paying off on that car for the next three to five years, you know. So the bank wants guarantees. You have that contract, take that contract to the bank. And 
if you want to buy a piece of property, I would advise you to do that. Because you don't want to be an actor that's still staying in somebody's yard at the age of 65. I mean, if that's what you want to do, great. But I, I'm not sure whether a lot of people want to do that. And I'm not talking about an expensive property. I'm talking about a one-bedroom bachelor pad just to get started so that you have something. And the, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay on the property that you buy. You buy a property and you rent it out. You may have to pay in a little bit initially. You just rent it out. And then you have something that is solid because this industry is so, so, so insecure. If that's what you want, if you want to get married eventually, there's nothing wrong with having some sort of property on your name. If you're going to move in with somebody, there's at least something there. that, And eventually that property will get paid off, not necessarily by you, but by somebody who's renting from you. That property will be something that is an asset that is yours. Also, the second thing is we don't have a retirement plan. There's no retirement plan. You're not going to work for a year and they're going to give you a retirement plan. That is something that's going to be your own responsibility. So you can go to one of these financial institutions. You can go to your bank. You can go to Old Mutual or wherever, Sunlum, whoever offers these things, Discovery. Have a pension plan. Start young. Because the reality is, in your old age, you're not going to get as much work. That's true. You're not going to work as much as you used to when you were younger. So you've got to make some sort of plan. You've got to be thinking ahead. Actors, think ahead. Think of your future. Um, so you're going to have to put, stop putting money away. And the thing is, if, if, your, if your pension plan lapses, if you have not worked for six months and you can't pay this thing, the beauty of a pension plan is you can make it paid up and it will keep growing. And it only pays out once you are of retirement age. You know what I mean? You can't take it out before then. But have some sort of plan for the future. Because let me tell you, this life can go very, very quickly. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, you know, I'm 50 already. How did that happen? I was, then, I was then 21 the other day. But, you know, that's it. That's it. You've got to have some sort of plan. If you have an endowment policy or if you have like a, if you have a chunk of money that you've got, you did this amazing Disney movie. Oh, wow. They paid you a chunk of money. Take some of that money and put it in a fixed deposit for the next five years. Just leave it there and forget about it. That money will grow into something more and then you reinvest. But have a financial plan. This is the reality of why your parents didn't want you to become an actor. Because they were scared you weren't going to be able to look after themselves. But you've got to prove to them that this is something that you can do. You know, this, this is, you, you are able to sustain yourself. You can look after yourself. And if you can find places where you can invest your money, where you'll get a long-term return, that will be just fantastic. It doesn't have to be big. If you have a policy where you put away 100 rand a month, 100 rand a month, that's nothing. That's like... You know, a fifth or a pair of shoes or, you know, a hundred bucks. That's like three drinks or two drinks. I don't know. I don't drink enough to know how much booze costs. But, um, you know, it's a bottle of wine's worth of money. Put that money away. In the end, you're going to see how that has grown over time. And it's going to help you in the long run. Don't just spend, spend, spend. And you think you're earning a high salary and then ka -ching! The money is just going. Parties are happening. And then in a couple of months' time, you're sitting high and dry. And then also, you've got to look after yourself, right? So when you're doing a production, you don't want to be sick. You want to have that body in tune. Take your vitamins. Do what you need to do. And also have some sort of medical, medical assistance, medical aid or whatever. You can get the cheapest thing when you are young. You can get the cheapest, cheapest plan when you are young. You know, I mean, obviously that's a personal preference. Um, but have something. Some people need medical aid, others don't. But you can get very, very easy plans with various institutions um, where you're going to be paying a very, very little amount of money. You can't go to every single doctor. You can't have your choice. You can paid and then there's certain only certain doctors and certain hospitals you can go to do that you know what i mean um there's also like uh, medical insurance where 
they you, every time you need to go to the doctor you don't pay for i mean you're paying monthly but it's like 350 bucks essential meds stuff like that it's cheap per month you don't have to have the 1800 rand medical aid plan but just have something what's also great is that sometimes you have a lot of time and we're actors but we're not just actors we have various interests so find out what those other interests are and discover whether it's something you can make money from. So have a side hustle, man. Have a side hustle. Or um, if, if, if there's a bar, learn how to mix drinks. Learn how to be a mixologist. Learn how to work behind a bar, you know. Take a course in mixing drinks or go and work at a restaurant. So that when you are not working as an actor, because when you're starting out, the roles are not coming in. People don't know who you are. You know, they're not going to, you know, are you a horse that they can bet on yet? <laughs> I mean, it sounds terrible. But are you somebody that they can count on yet? You don't have the reputation. You don't have the experience. Whatever it is that they decide you don't have, um, you know. But there are going to be times the organ, and this is what, what one of the young actors said to me, he said, you know, you watch your icons on television and you see they, they have an illustrious career and you think that is going to be the reality for yourself. And it might not be. So I say, have a side hustle. Whatever it else you're interested in, whether it's baking or mechanics or, you know what I mean, if you like to build things, um, if you like to build furniture, pursue that. Pursue that as well and have it run parallel with your career. Obviously, when you're working on a gig, when you're working on a show, don't be focused on the woodwork. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Don't bring the cabin you're making to set. <laughs> you know, you need to be focused on set. I mean, obviously, if it's, a, if it's something small that you can do at work, great. Do it to pass the time keeping the focus still, you know, um, but um, if you have a side hustle, do it. It's going to come in handy and keep that going. But of course, when you are working, please focus on the acting work. Don't be taking orders. <laughs> don't, be, don't be taking orders for your samosas that you make on the weekends, you know. Just completely focus on the work that needs to be done, but also keep your other side hustle going. And that's what I have for you today. I hope that's helped you. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, you know, if there's anything that I can help with, um, please leave a comment in the box below. And remember to like, share and subscribe. And you can visit my website on www.ilsaclink.com. It was great to have you here. Go out there and be amazing.